Hello again, everyone. Zack Attack is here in my WWE Money in the Bank review for tonight, Sunday, June 19th, 2016. All right, coming from the new Team Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is going to be a very special review. Uh, in a couple weeks, it'll be my five year anniversary of making videos here on YouTube. And my very first pay-per-view review I've ever made was for Money in the Bank 2011, where we had a very happy and shocking ending to the pay-per-view. Well, five years later, this Money in the Bank with all the hype built in for this being one of the best, probably the best, Money in the Bank pay-per-views ever, even your Super WrestleMania, and going up against the NBA Finals Game 7. This pay-per-view lived up to that hype. And then some. We had a great dream match with a little bit of a scary ending. Fun little fan of 4-way. Plus an overall epic night for the state of Ohio. Not only did the Cleveland Cavaliers finally won their first NBA championship, but as you see from my subtitle, a huge momentous moment happened for another Ohio native. So what a night in the world of sports, not just in basketball, but of course in wrestling. With a terrific, and so would say epic, mind to make. Even with some okay matches, the big moments made the pay-per-view worth it. Even when the pay-per-view went over. Pay-per-view went over about a half hour. But even with that, fun event. Epic. 7.0 for this one. It is kind of better than me. Uh, well, let me say this. The ending was better than Mania. And it could lead to a big main event at SummerSlam. So, let's get going with the pre-show. With the matches for the pre-show changed like that within days. We were supposed to have two singles matches on the pre-show. But for some reason, they were pushed to the main court. Which might have been a mistake. Especially how the pay-per-view went over time. But it wasn't as bad as I get in WrestleMania. Because maybe you started at 8, not 7. Well, at least some people didn't watch it at 7 like I did. So it didn't feel like Mania, but still, not as bad. So we had two tag team matches instead on the pre show. Kicking us off Golden Truth against Breezango. I missed a bit of the pre show. I It was a hot day here in Michigan, but like 90 degrees here. Everyone's staying cool. Oh, there's Happy late Father's Day. I know it's like by the time this video comes up, it'll be late Monday morning. So happy belated Father's Day, everybody. Especially my dad, my great worldy dad. So I missed a bit of the pre-show. Like, I missed like the intro. Because I was hot and went to my brother's girlfriend's uncle's house for a pool party. So I missed the intro, but I missed, didn't miss the match between Pizongo and uh, going to, I did miss the setup for why Pizongo got sunburned. But it was kind of a funny little bit. And this has been so long. Like, like the long and winding bill for going in truth. And them losing all the time to Breeze Hongo. They needed to win. And they kind of did. They had, to, they had to do it the cheap way. Give Breeze Hongo an excuse for possibly losing. Getting sunburned. With going into exploit in this nothing but comical match that could have been on the wall. But with the Golden Truth double team moves and leading up to the single finish, which is Gold Dust final cut, Golden Truth finally not only get their first ring as a team, but also defeat the arch rivals. Breeze on go 2.0. It was a comedy match, it was kind of an okay opener, but at least Golden Truth finally won a match. But they have okay chemistry. Like after that long build, you expect them to have some sort of chemistry. Breeze on has more chemistry than Golden Truth. So, maybe this people will finally end. For, for real. Don't drag it out. Just like Golden Troop had their happy ending, and don't let this feud continue. Just let it fucking end tonight. Like another feud that should fucking end tonight after their match, which I'll get to in a moment. More of the matches that was supposed to be on the pre show. So, let's get to the match that was last minute edition. The Dully Boys against Luke the Dragon with no hype whatsoever. It was just, we need to fill in time. Let's put this match in. And it was even rumored at one point Kalisto was supposed to be the seventh guy in the Money in the Bank match. But it didn't go that well. I'm sorry. Like, Kalisto could have done an epic spot, especially that 
Celia Del Sol like he did at TLC, but he wasn't needed. Because the match was still good. The Emma to be a match. So, we have Lutus against Dudley's. Dudley's become like the punching bag in the WWE. He thought they were returning. I know they're trying to get young guys over. And that's why they're here, but it's still sad to see him lose all the time. And this was the case. Despite okay little offense for the Dudley's, even with the fans taunting with, we want tables. Lutus Dragons has been kind of an idol for a little bit, especially with Kalisto going for a singles one and going to be the U.S. champion in a kind of a uh, less than exciting one for the as the title holder. Maybe with Sin Cara, maybe they can get back in the winning race. And they kind of did that with some double team moves leading up to the Celia Del Sol and Bubba Ray leading up to the big splash from Sin Cara the Dragon Ball and the 1-2-3 victory for the Little Dragons. 2.0 as well. Okay, openers for the pre-show, but one match was kind of unneeded. This one. It's kind of last minute addition. So there you go. Now onto the main card. Your kickoff match for the main card. It's the Fatal 4-Way for the WWE World Tag Team Championships as the New Day would defend against Enzo and Cass, The Club, Gallows and Anderson, and the Vaughn Villains. Great promos from both New Day and Enzo and Cass. Enzo and Cass, I like Enzo's. I was born a rambling man. I was born a gambling man. Kind of singing both Rambling Man by Al Almond Brothers Man and Rambling Gambling Man by Bob Singer at the same time. Like, quoting them both. You know, make some Vegas references because we were in Vegas tonight. We had a fun little money outfit with a poop emoji and all. That's just, like his thing. The poop emoji now. They're calling everybody soft. But New Day's promo, like some say they're better heels, but they're great good guys too with this promo. Uh, the mentioning of Enzo and Cass being Chewbacca and Luke was funny, especially when Xavier did his priceless Chewbacca impersonation, especially saying in Chewbacca talk, how you doing? But there's a little jab against the club, Primo Pacific, the Bullet Club. With Xavier Woods saying that we are the elite of the world of tag teams. Well, it might be a slight little jab at the elite of the Bullet Club, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, who have been kind of been making fun of New Day on the internet and on, most importantly, social media. So, for those of you who got that little jab at the elite of the Bullet Club, I will plug you with a too sweet. Mm. So, anyway, on to the match itself. Fun opener for the main card. He had some botches. Especially one point when Kofi was trying to go for like a break move and he kind of botched it. Kind of recovered though. But, <laughs> but it was still a fun match with all the teams looking really good. Especially the club. Looking excellent. Okay, double team with Enzo and Cass. You know, Enzo flying. Some good flying spots. And the final five minutes was crazy. Especially with all the teams nailing all the double team finishes. First we had Enzo and Cass doing the rocket launcher. Then you had the Willing Dervish from the Fawn Villains. And then the Magic Killer from the club. And then the double team finish from the New Day with Big S taking out the club. Big E did a big double team finish. And I think Simon God's got the pin. 1 2 3 victory. For the new day, new Kimmy Canes. They need to break the record for the longest win as champions. Because I would love to have seen Club win tonight, or even Enzo and Cass. But you can't deny a new day so over. As much as these guys. So I think they should lose it at SummerSlam or Night of Champions. At least be able to break the record as the longest reigning WWE World Tag Team Champions. The record currently held by Paul London and Brian Kendrick. A 3.5 for this one. The boss just kind of took some points away. But it's still a fun opener. Great fan for you. Four fun teams. I knew when this match was signed, this match was going to be a fun one, and it was. Spots is assigned. Some great spots, some great action. And also, I need to mention Biggie Spear on Simon Gotch, which made him motionless to get pinned. Holy shit, that was a nasty spot. 
There were so many nasty spots tonight in this pay-per-view. This is the first one. So there you go. New Navy Tains. Now on to our next match. Dolph Ziggler against Baron Corbin. One of the matches that could have been, or was supposed to be in the pre-show. Which, in retrospective, was kind of a good move to put us on the main roster show. Because, it would have, if it was staying in the pre-show, it would have been the pre-show match. Three months in a row! Come on. Barry's been in WWE for three months and he has had a proper pay-per-view match. On the main pay-per-view card. This was it. And this feud does need to end. I think it does. Especially, I think it was kind of a good move and bad move to make on the main card. Especially the fans who were kind of chitty tonight. Some say annoying. Maybe not as annoying as the NXT fans at full sale. But still, kind of close. Um, yeah, fans saying boring. This match. It was kind of it was a slow going match. With Corbin looking good. And there was a bond to the match. Uh, and the outside, Ziggler was going to go. He was running. Running uh, over the top steps, he was gonna go one of the one over the steps and be caught by Corbin for a pure set for a deep six. But Ziggler got tripped up. He tripped up the steps. He was gonna jump over, but he tripped. But Corbin saved that botch. He did caught Ziggler despite the trip, so he kind of made up for that little botch there and recovered for that mistake that Ziggler made and delivered a nasty deep six on the floor. So they were coming for that botch that could have been devastating for that match. So, so that's why Ziggler coming in with some big moves, including at one point delivering the famous turn. Corbin got a big power set moves, got the big strike saying, got the end of days after numerous attempts. In the victory, one, two, three for Baron Corbin, 2.4 for this one. Okay, little match. At least Corbin finally won. A match on the main pay-per-view card. Not on the pre-show. And hopefully, like I said earlier, I hope this feud fucking ends. Corbin needs some new people to feud with. He's been feuding with Ziggler ever since he debuted. So it needs to end tonight. And hope it did. On to our next match. The tag team match involving Dana Brooke and Charlotte. And Becky Lynch and Natalya. Now the women's matches are now being treated like bathroom breaks again. I think everyone agrees with me. I've been saying it for the last couple of weeks on my wall reviews. My baby reviews. It's sad to hell that after all the goodwill that was put by the WWE to finally give a fuck about women's wrestling and main roster and all the great booking they did, all the great work to hype it up, and all that great effort at WrestleMania with that great triple threat at Mania, which was probably one of the best matches of an OK Mania. All that good will has been thrown down the fucking drain for the last two months. Especially the endings of the last two pay-per-view women's title matches. So bad, we have a women's tag team match tonight. And the fans trolled with We Want Sasha Chance. We still didn't get her. She ever going to return or what? I don't know trying to build them up. Either they're trying to save her for a long-term storyline. Or they're punishing her for getting injured again. For being injury prone, as Vince said. Thus being maybe the reason why we could have had a women's money in the bank, as rumored. But if they don't, they don't that if they don't have the balls to turn Reigns heel, why would they have the balls to put on a women's ladder match? So, so despite all the goodwill being thrown away by the WWE for the women's division being revolutionary again, this tag team match was okay, oh, good decent match. Could be better, but hey, the way WWE is treating the women's division right now, it's fucking sickening. You know, we had all that goodwill, all that great effort to finally give me a fuck about the Divas Division. But for the last two months, Dari's giving a fuck you to the Women's Division and fucked it down the drain. This match was an okay match, but still a long way to go. After the match was interesting, kind of unpredictable. So it was a slow going match, but it was an okay little match with Dana Brooks' first pay per view match. You know, being lumped in with Charlotte after Emma got unfortunately injured. You know, she's trying to make the best out of it, which she is with Charlotte. And even if the miscommunication on Wall helped Charlotte lose a match against Paige of all people. I even said, we want Paige sign. They didn't Charlotte stay on the same page. Same with Becky and Natalya. With both teams doing well with double teaming. But as Natalya got the sharpshooter in on Charlotte, then the book came in for the save. 
but it was a miscommunication that ended it for the Fanatian Becky. Natty got whammed inadvertently into Becky Lynch by Dana, knocking them both into each other, and Charlotte capitalized on it. With the natural selection on Natalia in the 1 2 3 victory for Charlotte and Becky Lynch. Like we had a screwy ending, but it wasn't as bad as the other screwy endings for the women's matches lately. 2.7. Like I said, long way to go to reclaim the goodwill that Dodie did on the women's division before and at, before Mania and at Mania. You know what I mean? They need something big to happen for the women's division. You know, it's been they had so many good stuff happen and there's been too much shit and now they're being treated like a fucking bathroom brick again. And these women, these women right here, do not deserve to be bathroom bricks. The old diva god, back with you know the Bella Trains, Laycor, all them guys, they deserve to be bathroom break matches. They were deserve to be treated like it because the wrestling really wasn't there. You find these great women on the great main roster of NXT coming in the main roster, and they don't deserve to be bathroom break matches. But no, you fucking treat it like that again. But the end of the match, like I said, was kind of unpredictable. Could lead to some interesting things. It doesn't fuck it and it did everything else in this women's division thus far. So after the match, back me and Natty were disappointed. Especially Natty. She was she was almost crying. But that crying turned to pure anger. As Natty attacked Becky Lynch out of nowhere from behind and nailed her and tossed over the top wall. So we have a Natty Hill turn now. This could be a signal for Becky Lynch's friend, former frenemy, by uh, Sasha Banks to come in to feud with Charlotte. So now, Natty's busy. I think Natty and Charlotte's over. Now we can finally get Sasha and Charlotte the feud we've been wanting. You know what I mean? But, you know, we're finally going to get that match. You know, Sasha, Charlotte, the match I've been banging for for about a year. One on one, Sasha, Charlotte may finally happen. But after the recent events of the women's division main roster. Getting to see finally Sasha and Charlotte finally fight possibly on the main roster will feel bittersweet. Because of all the effort that he's done for the US division going down in flames in the last two months. But they really want to fucking recapture that glory. And they really want to recapture Goodwill and don't fuck anything up. Sasha Shaw needs to happen at SummerSlam and don't fuck it up WWE. Your last fucking chance that finally we claim women's wrestling glory don't mess it up this time. So there you go. Way it over. Now on to Apollo Crews and Sheamus. Another match that was supposed to be in the main card. Uh, a pre-show, but met, moved the main card. One of the reasons why the match, the pay-per-view went over. Anyway, it was Apollo Crews' first pay-per-view match as well. And the Bill Dallas Bob got him from Despite coming in too early, in my opinion, like a lot of people probably agree with me. So, this very good debut, Apollo looked pretty decent this first match on the main pay per view roster. Taking on Sheamus, a veteran, coming off his appearance in Team NT Out of the Shadows, comes the big nasty moves, then beats the boundary, a nasty right noise off the top. Well, that was pretty nasty. Like, make fun of Sheamus, he's trying. It was an okay little match, despite the, the booking of this feud and the build of the feud. Kind of being like lost her and kind of washed. Like most of the WWE feuds these days. Especially the builds being kind of washed. This match, despite that weird build. And the slow build. To the feud. And the way they build it. Especially after they both lost MITB qualifiers. In the same night, you know. And they haven't stalled a feud that night. Still, the match was pretty decent. Punk gave some big, new, big moves. Big slams. Some would say Cruz would have lost with a rookie mistake. Sheamus pulled like a rookie mistake of his own. He delivered the white noise. And I mentioned that white noise that he did from the second row. That was a nasty white noise. And he pinned Apollo during that. And there was a two count. Sheamus got distracted with the referee. That momentary mental mistake from Sheamus cost him. As Apollo capitalized by rolling him up. One, two, three, victory for Apollo Cruz in his first pay-per-view match. Get a new power with a one. So there you go. 
Uh, 2.6. It was okay, man. They made the power look decent. Despite coming in early, they still got a lot of work to maybe add some definitions and add some refinements to his character to make him more likable. Give some more build-up videos to show why he should be treated so good and why is he going up so early, you know. So at least they're trying to make the best out of the situation with him getting rid over Seamus. See how this goes. See if this few drags or it just ends tonight. So there you go. Now, ending this aside, on with, in my mind, I think probably everyone should agree. My big ladder match was good. I'll say that much. I'll just get that out of the way. My big ladder match was terrific. But this was, in my mind, a match tonight. AJ Styles against John Cena. The dream match, some would say. The King of TNA in 06. And the King of WWE in 2006 finally faced off. It was a lot of hype for this match. As much as the entire pay per view itself. This match, out of the entire match in the pay per view, had the most hype attached to it. You know, with the dream match tag. And it kind of lived up to the expectations. Uh, some would say it's a contender for match of the year. Well, it is up there as one of the best of the year. I still got to say, I'm still sticking with Nakamura and Zayn as my favorite match of the year thus far. A uh, close second would be this one, and also Will Oprah Spray and the uh, Ricochet in the New Japan match. That was excellent, too. But this match, like I said, excellent. Great spots. Uh, and I got really nice match wings, though. And AJ is coming with some big nasty moves as well. And uh, there was so much. Both guys had their finish. Like, both guys did the finishers. And both guys did their submission moves. And it was near fall. The near fall was a slow build. But once it got going, oh boy, with the, with the big moves. Big moves off the top. And there was, you know, the crowd was hyped. Someone said the crowd was. Some people were going to say the crowd was annoying during the match. You know, so many chants during this match. But I don't think they ruined the match with it. Like, I really see a good crowd chanting instead of like being dead like at Corpus Christi. But if the crowd didn't ruin the match, the club gonna do. Despite the fact that the club was supposed to be banned from this match, they went in anyway. As referee got knocked out at the scene was going for the FU. And my friend who was here, he kind of predicted it. So Cena had AJ down for the count. After the FU, and then here comes the club. Why not Q? Did I love the magic killer on AJ Styles' as opponent? And AJ got pushed into Cena by the club. One, two, three, victory for AJ Styles. So the good news, AJ beats Cena. Bad news, not clean. I don't like it when people get over Cena dirty. You know, Rusev got over Cena dirty. You know, the only way that this match feud against Cena was a dirty ending. A screwy ending. With a lot of helping moves that were the press nuts at Fastlane last year. But if you can get Kevin Owens to get over Cena clean, why couldn't they let AJ get over Cena clean? And I and make fun of JBL's commentary all you want about him being healed and go back to face. He was sadly gonna ride. AJ Cena was a great match. So much great action. So many great spots. With these guys with parry legs and near falls and back and forth action. Cena selling a knee injury, especially if they get put in the calf killer. But it's still kind of said AJ had a win dirty. Yeah, it's the heel way to do. You know, with the club. But that means he could win over Cena clean next time. Or Cena wins over AJ clean. Super Cena. Uh, I was going to give this match a 4.5. But I deduct... Three, uh, two points for the screwy ending. With kind of a purpose, but not exactly. 4.3. Fast match tonight, even with some little weird things with the ending. With AJ winning, I guess I'm happy AJ won. You know, who who should be happy? Come on, AJ got over Cena. But he got over him dirty. You know, with a screwy ending. So, like, mixed emotions about it. You know, you know, it's a dream match. You know, some people would say, you know. That two of his being used a little loose these days. So then I was like, okay, what's at the main big match? Um, what's at the Cena AJ match? Maybe we could have like a cool down match 
Well, that was after the Money Bank match. For these guys to come after Cena and Jer uh, Cena and uh, Styles, tough spot to follow. But if any match could follow AJ and Cena, this match was the match to do it. And it was. It was the match to do it. Everybody in this match, of course, Dean Ambrose, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Del Rio, and Zazaro, no seventh guy, stick to six. I think it was the right move. So many great spots. Uh, probably one of my favorite six spots of the night was when Kevin Owens got nailed, and he was the MVP of this match. Owens looked fucking phenomenal tonight. He had a great performance tonight. Especially with the triple power bombs. Not power bombs. Triple cannonballs in the corner. To everybody, that was a great spot. Even if he got doubled to Louvre kick by Sami Zayn later. And that sixth spot right, would be delivered by Sami Zayn. With a ladder uh, split open. And Sami did a Michinoku driver on the Kevin Owens with the ladder split open. And Kevin's head hitting the top head of the ladder. Sick ass shit. Holy shit. That was probably one of the sickest spots of the night. Besides Kevin Owens landing in between the ladders and one of the one of the ladder pushes. And you had Cesaro swing everybody and go on a triple pow up upper country. He looked awesome too. He had a great performance too. Those were my two MVPs. And Ambos too. Even though he's kind of taken out of the match a little bit by Del Rio with a ladder nail against his head. Ambos came with some big flying moves as well. And I'm like, it wouldn't look good. Even Del Rio and Jericho, the two unnecessary guys, they had a good little showing. But Del Rio comes with big moves, even having the cross arm break at the top of the ladder at one point. I think it was against Cesaro at one I think it was to Cesaro. In a mid-air call break about Jericho. And then the ending. We had one ladder in the middle, and then we had a ladder on this side, like this. And another ladder on this, and you had all six guys on these ladders. That was a great little way to end it. All the guys with two on one ladder on, like, two guys on one ladder like this. Two guys on one ladder like that. And two guys on the top middle ladder. And, uh, Owens and Zayn on one ladder. And they both fall down. And then, Jericho got knocked off. But then Owens got knocked, got back up to try to get Ambrose out. But an Ambrose climbed the ladder. He got the briefcase. Dean Ambrose, Mr. Money in the Bank. After all the shit he's been through, I'm so happy he won this one. So happy. I was going to pick Owens or Ambrose. Unlike Sheamus, who was kind of like an unnecessary win last year, an unimportant win, this is a big important win. 3.7 for this match. Didn't have any real... The spots were still good. A lot of matches maybe had more exciting spots, but the spots that did happen, especially at Michinoku Diver by Zane to Owens, holy crap. That was a sick spot. There were some good spots, though. And everybody had some good performances, especially Owens looked awesome tonight. Even if he didn't win, he looked great. It proves that one day he would be cheap. So there you go. So as the mind break went on, I was looking at the time. I was like, wait a minute. It was like 10.25 by the time the... Money Bank match ended. It was like, oh, are they going to cut Rusev and uh, Titus O'Neil? Nope. Boy, did I feel bad for these guys. I had a sneaky feeling we were going to have a cool down match at the Money in the Bank ladder match in between that and the main event. But not only was it like, it was like the absolute worst timing. Now it was a pay per view kind of one over. But game seven was going on, and the last two minutes was going on, and the last two minutes were insane. It was insanely close. Between the Cavs and the Golden State Warriors. I can imagine the Chicago Bulls fans are going to troll the fuck out of Golden State Warriors. You beat a record, but you didn't win the, didn't win the championship. Cue the sad Jordan memes. You looked into the Mexico in the Copa Americana thing that I don't really care because I'm not a football soccer fan. So, who's even... Titus on here had like the worst possession you can do. Now we were in a cool down match. And especially after following two really good matches, but also the last two rounds of the NBA championship was on and made people want to tune out. It was going to run over again. This match was unexciting as it gets. It was predictable. 
too predictable. Beat down, yeah, Titus is in the ring side. It was just a slaughter. Like Titus O'Neil, despite getting a little singles push after getting unrightfully suspended after a wrong thing he did in the vents at the Daniel Bryan tribute, blah, 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 blah. We all know that incident to make up for it, but he got crushed by Rusev. Beat the match. Accolade 2.0. Let's move on. So there you go. The ultimate talk was when Rusev came in front of his kids, his being the Titus' kids, grabbing the mic and saying to him, You know your dad over that? Yeah, loser. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> the ultimate troll. My like Rusev started looking like a badass. Like, this is the match that needed to happen. You know, he was kind of unpredictable boy. This was the match that needed to go down and continue to build Rusev like a badass again. At the speaking of goodwill that was lost, at the all of his good booking, they gave him bad booking for the last year and a half. It's kind of like what they're doing in the women's division right now. They had some good booking for it and fucked it up after Mania. Especially with the last two pay per views. The pay per view tonight made up for it, but still, long way to go to reclaim our good graces in the Divas women's division. So there you go. On to our main event. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, for the WWE Women's Championship. Crowd was definitely on Rollins' side. Despite a weird build and a slow build for this feud, this match was a good match. Now as good as the other Reigns main events, especially with the the death, the uh, handicap of having the pay-per-view one over. Last time we had the pay-per-view went over, WrestleMania, and it was like a four and a half hour pay per view, and it, the main event was boring. It was for the slow part, but but match kind of picked up in my mind. Rollins carried the fucking match. Way to the okay moments too, despite sucking as usual. He did that power bomb out of the razor's edge that he did last month. So that's like his new move now. And I like that Falcons thing that um Seth Rollins did. He did like a suplex off the top rope to Reigns and got right back up and did like a. Supex Power Slam. That should be his new finisher. Fuck the pedigree. If they still won't let him use the curb stomp, let him use that finish. Don't let him use Triple H's finish for one for two reasons. One, one, the fact that it's Triple H's finisher. And two, the other guy just recovered from knee surgery. And it was his first match since November of last year. See, don't need to mention, it was his first match since October of last year. That's why I made this match, this Pay-per-view kind of built up to be better than Mania with a lot of injured guys that were out of Mania coming back tonight and kind of helping this call big time. There was some interesting spots, especially when Reigns was going for a big move of the top rope and Rollins caught him with a modified pedigree. That was kind of cool. Make fun of the pedigree as it's finished, like I said earlier, but still kind of was kind of a cool little modified in midair. And imagine kind of got, it was a slow build. It got exciting with various Superman punches and various spears by Reigns. I'm like, oh, here we go again. And if Reigns would have won, crowd would have fucking rioted. And would have warranted a cash in. If Reigns would have got the victory. The man that was faster than Rey Mysterio. More powerful than the Big Show. Able to bury careers in a single bound. Super Reigns would have won. But then Reigns was going for the spear. And Rey got knocked out. And he got the pin. But Rollins kicked out. But then Rollins got back up. A little bit of pedigree. Two pedigrees it took. And after the second one, he pinned them. I thought, okay, one, two, kick out wings. Nope, it was one, two, three, Rollins wins. Yay! Yes, 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 Rollins wins. He wins the championship. He beat Wayne's. The man who never lost the championship. Finally get the title back. But then... Dean Ambrose's music hits. I say this a lot on my reviews. When WWE has a chance to do some exciting, some unexpected, some to shake things up, besides bringing back the brand split, when they have up to do something shocking in a pay-per-view, and end on a shocking note, they fucking fail. They go to predictable routes and have anticlimactic endings. Like at WrestleMania and, ex and at Payback. We didn't have an anticlimactic ending at Payback at Extreme Rules, which we turn of Wallens. 
So I make fun of WWE for not doing anything shocking. But I will forgive them for all that. Because finally, they have an opportunity to do something shocking and something awesome to edit a review. They fucking did it. They fucking did it. Abels came out, nailed Rollins with the briefcase, delivered the dirty deeds after he cashed it in the briefcase. Bell rang, dirty deeds, like I said. One, two, three. I walked the hell out of everybody did. Abels wins. She cashed it on Reigns, though. But I, even I said that if anyone would have cashed it on Reigns, should have won instead of getting buried. Like, trying to cash in on Reigns and losing is like the equivalent of trying to cash in on Cena and losing. Like, we're having a send out. But Rollins got cashed in on by Impulse, who, for the first time since 2010, that a person who won Mind the Bank cashed in the same night. Kane did it in 2010. And now Impulse did it. Impulse cashed it in. Would have more sweeter, like I said, to see it on Reigns. And Reigns would have retained. But Ambos was kind of right. He said on Monday he was going to win money in the bank and cash it in on Reigns or Rollins, no matter who won. And he cashed it in tonight on Rollins. I thought maybe when he music came, I was like, okay, maybe he's going to tease using it. They're not going to ruin Rollins' moment. But. Like, as much as I would love to see Wallens be the champ again, I'm finally happy. I think everybody can agree. Wallens will be champ again. But let Ambos have his moment. Finally, after being the third wheel and with the crowd loving him, they, he finally won. I, I think everyone can almost uh, answer me on this one. What do you think of the bigger pop? Wallens winning over Reigns or Ambos cashing in Minor Bank? I think Ambos got the bigger pop. In my opinion. So there you go. 3.2 for the main event match itself. Just between Ambos. Just enemies in the shield. It's former buddies. Just the Wallens, and Wallens Reigns match gets a 3.3. Gets an extra point for the uh, after match ending. So I said in the beginning. This main event ending could set up a big main event match for SummerSlam. I made some big predictions in the past. I even said that if Reigns would have won. He would have been cashed in on. Well, we did have a cash in after all. Not against Reigns, though, tonight. And I was the one that called in Wallace's well, cash in last year at Mania. So, I'm going to make another bull prediction. The main event at SummerSlam. They better save it. They better save it for SummerSlam. Ambrose, Reigns, and Rollins. Triple threat match for the championship. They better have that match for SummerSlam. They better not waste it. At Battleground. This epic triple threat between the former Shield Buddies, triple threat for the championship, should not be fucking wasted at Battleground. This match should be at a big event. And not WrestleMania, it better be SummerSlam. So that's my prediction. Shield main event for the championship at SummerSlam. Reigns, Ambrose, and Rollins. Doesn't matter about the brain split. Because this was the last pay-per-view before the return of the brand split. And something big needed to happen at this final pay-per-view before the brand split. Could have been the return of a hey, riot. No, we didn't have a return of riot. Could something big that would have happened might have been the debut of Balor? Maybe tomorrow. Or maybe another time. Or maybe never. But that something big that didn't happen tonight was Ambrose. And as I said in the beginning of the video, what a night overall for Ohio. Cleveland Cavaliers finally won their franchise first NBA championship while well, Cincinnati's own Dean Ambrose captures the WWE Whatever Championship after winning by the bank and cashing in the same night. What a night, people. And that is it for my WWE Money to Bank review. Thank you so much for this. Opportunity to these videos for you guys. Like I said, it's almost my five year anniversary of making videos. Uh, the anniversary, to be exact, will be Thursday, July 14th. But this is my five year anniversary of making reviews. Because I my first baby review was money to make in 2011 when CM Punk beat Cena. And five years later, we had a shocking ending again with Ambos winning 
and cashing in. So thank you so much for anyone who's watched my videos, especially my pay-per-view reviews for the last five years. Like I said, there'll be a proper five-year anniversary attack line in sports, probably. So there'll be a proper five-year five anniversary video when the anniversary comes. But right now, five-year anniversary of making reviews of pay-per-views with this tonight. So thank you so much. With that in mind, once again, you've been attacked by the review from Zach Seal, everybody. So I should aim with a pay-per-view. Lived up to the hype. Especially that ending. That pay-per-view was just too sweet. Scooby Reigns.